Thanksgiving, it seems like we roll right into Christmas time and, you know, we kind of shift our songs a little bit and sing about Christmas, but really Christmas is every day. Every day we celebrate and we're thankful every day for the great gift that God gave us through his son, Jesus. It is, yeah, this time of season that we, we kind of focus on it, but every day as Christians, we should all celebrate Christmas because we've been given the greatest gift, the gift of our salvation through Jesus Christ. And uh, no matter where you're at today, no matter where you come from today, that gift is yours, freely given, freely received. Today, as we sing these songs, may they help us to focus our lives and just give thanks to this great gift that he's given to each one of us. Love incarnate, love divine. Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The Savior of humanity Unto us a child is born shall reign forevermore no well no well come and see what god has done no well no well. Story of 
Father God, this morning, thank you for your amazing gift. Thank you for that gift that gives us hope, that gift that gives us life, that gift that gives us salvation. We no longer have to fear what death holds because we know the one who holds death. We no longer have to fear hell for hell has been stripped away for those who have accepted the great gift of salvation. This holiday season, as we go from place to place and as we go from house to house and we celebrate with different family members and we, as we celebrate in different services and we celebrate at different parties and around, around this community and around our lives, God, I, I just pray that we would always remember the amazing gift that you've given us, that gift that changes that gift that transforms, that gift that brings us life. For because of that great, amazing gift, our lives are forever changed. Can you just right now thank him for his great gift? Can you just thank him for the gift of Jesus Christ, for the gift that he gave us to live among us, to walk with us, to give his life for us?
kind of calmness of this moment. Let us remember that when all the craziness goes on, whenever the hustle and bustle is happening and family drama is taking place, that you are the Lord of our lives. And that sometimes, Lord, we just need to stop and calm and just take a breath in the heat of the moment and just say, you are Lord of my life. God, may you grant us peace this holiday season. May we find that silent night, even through the crazy chaos, and remember that you are Lord of our, over our lives. Guide and direct us, and thank you, Jesus, for your great salvation. Be Lord of our lives, we ask. And everybody said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Anyway, it was a great day, and I hope you guys are enjoying your time. And what I want to talk to you guys about is uh, the holidays can be stressful. The holidays can be lots of tension, lots of things pulling us in different directions, trying to grab our attention, trying to get us to go here or go there. And there's parties to go to. There's, there's family events that you have to do. And uh, there's all kinds of things that take place this, during the holiday season. And so what I want to do is I wanted to kind of, on Sundays, kind of step back a little bit and kind of go, okay, we're going to learn how to travel light what I mean by getting rid of stuff this holiday season. How, what are some things that we don't have to take with us during the holiday season? Uh, there's a story of, a, of a, a lady that was doing Black Friday shopping, actually, and um, she had her purse with her, and she, she set it down in, the, in an aisle someplace, and she was so built up in the craziness of Black Friday that she forgot her purse in an aisle, and uh, sometime later, a little boy uh, came running up to her, and uh, brought her purse up to her and said, ma'am, I believe you left this in the aisle back there. She said, oh, thank you so much, son. Thank you. I appreciate you that. And she, she reached in her wallet to, to give him a, a reward for bringing it back to him. And she goes, huh, now that's strange. She goes, I had a $20 bill here. Now I have 20 ones. He said, yes, ma'am, I went ahead and cashed it out for you so you can give me my tip. <laughs> so holidays are always crazy. I don't know about you, but... Um, there always seems to be something that will go down during the holiday season. Growing up, my, uh, my mother would always have a big, of course, Thanksgiving dinner for everybody. And my mom, uh, if you know anything about my mom, Sharon, uh, it's kind of like those, a lot of those uh, videos they're making online, you know, get with it, Sharon. That's, that's kind of my mom. Uh, that's kind of the deal with my mom. And so she, uh, she, she, uh, she, would, she would do some crazy things around the holidays. I don't think I've ever told you the story of, of one year during the Thanksgiving holiday, she decided she wanted to paint the stairs, go into our basement. And, uh, and so she put the turkey in the oven, and I was always there to help with the turkey. So we got the turkey in the oven, and I'm, I'm sleeping upstairs. And I want to say I'm, I'm, I'm in the high school. I'm like ninth or 10th grade, and, and I'm, not, I'm not super young. But I remember, um, I remember, I didn't remember everything going on, but I heard the smoke alarm going off. Um, I heard, you know, that there was frantics going on, and my mom, she would, she would use the air duct vents were her alarm clock and her warning system for all of us upstairs. She, they, they had their bedroom in the basement, and they, she would take a broom, and she'd beat the air conditioning vent to wake us up, you know, and to get us awake and everything like that. Anybody do that in your house? It's a great way to, really annoying to get your kids up. Um, but my mom would beat, the, would beat the air conditioning vent. And I remember waking up to smoke alarms and the, the air vent, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. You know that thing my mom loves to scream. And, um, and I came out and, I, and we had a friend staying at the house, my, one of my sister's friends and my sister. And I see them running around. The house is full of smoke and there's smoke everywhere. And, and the, bird is, you know, the bird is done. I mean, it's, it's, it's no salve, saving the bird. And um, the, the, the bird was done. And I was like, what is, where is, why is mom not up here? Why is she banging on the air conditioning vent to get us? Well, she painted, she decided to paint the stairs 
and she started at the top and worked her way to the bottom, and she was stuck in the basement until one o'clock the next day. My dad, actually, I take that back. My, I remember now, my dad actually broke the window out in the very small window, and my mom crawled out the window to come around and make all that. My dad was stuck in the basement until one o'clock because he was a bigger guy. He couldn't get through that window. Um, but anyway, I remember those vivid memories of, of the holidays. It still was a great day, burnt bird and all. It was a great day. Mashed potatoes were amazing. That's all that matters in my book. So um, it, was, it was a wonderful day. So Last week, I talked with you guys about when you, when you go through for the holidays, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to go into the holidays like Mary did um, with a one handful living. And remember, I, I showed you the illustration with a candy that you can have a handful or you can have two handfuls. And oftentimes, we're always looking for the two handful life. We always want more than what we can handle. We're always wanting to get more than what we actually need. And so sometimes what happens, because we have this two handful of life, we have lots of chaos and lots of stress. Scripture says, better to live with one handful with peace and tranquility than two handfuls with strife and turmoil, Scripture says. And so many of us are striving in life for all the stuff. We wanted the stuff because the stuff brings happiness. And the stuff brings fulfillment, and the stuff brings joy to our lives. But yet, what we really need to understand is that really, when both our hands are full of stuff, we are not able to do what God has called us to do by reaching out and helping people during this season, helping people through life, maybe encouraging people, lifting people up. Because why? Both our hands are preoccupied with the stuff. And so I encourage you this holiday season, get rid of one handful. Don't get rid of all the stuff, but make sure that your hand is free don't strive for all the things that you can't reach out and help somebody during this time of season. And I use the scripture found in, in Matthew, or in Luke, I'm sorry, where Luke chapter 2, verse 18, it says that Mary pondered these things in her heart and she treasured them. And it's just taking a breath from the moment and enjoying the season of the holiday when you're with your family. So don't get so caught up in the stuff. That's one of the challenges I want to give you about traveling light. Today, uh, is one that is probably a little bit harder to talk about and discuss. It's one that we don't really like to talk about. We don't really want to deal with. We don't want to really have to face. Because to deal with what I'm going to encourage you to get rid of today means we have to look inside. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to look inside us and say, is there a part of my life that I'm affected by this? And our, the scripture I want to give you today is Hebrews chapter 12, Verse 14, here's what it says. Now, this is a perfect scripture for the holidays. Let's read it together. Here's what it says. It says, make every effort to live in peace with what? With all men, uh, with everyone, and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that what? No bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Now, go back to the other verse, you guys would. Jump back there. It says, make every effort. How many efforts are we going to make? Every. every. We're going to make every effort to do what? Live in peace. Now, some of you during your holiday, thanks, your holiday uh, Christmas meals need to read this scripture right out the beginning. We need to make every effort to live at peace. Uh, why? Because that is a matter of holiness unto God, to live in strife-free life. Now, we think that's impossible. But more importantly is, it's not necessarily that we can't live in peace. It's more importantly about what bitterness do we carry with us during this time of season, during this time of year. Because some of you to this year, you're going to go into your homes where your parents, you have a bitter spirit towards them. Others of you have a bitterness towards your siblings. Others of you, it's to Uncle John or Uncle Roy or Aunt, you know, so-and-so, whoever it is. You have bitterness inside your heart, and you're carrying with you in your baggage that stuff, the bitterness that so easily takes away the peace and causes strife and causes turmoil. <coughs> bitterness, not only will bitterness poison you, but bitterness will poison those around you, Scripture says. 
You'll make there to be chaos with those around you. And so I want to encourage you this season that we're going to try to do our best to get rid of one less stress. What is the stress? Bitterness. All right? Let's talk about it today, okay? Two thoughts I have about bitterness according to Hebrews is this. First one is this. Bitterness has a dangerous root. Say it with me. Bitterness has a what? A dangerous root. A dangerous root. Scripture says in verse 15, see to it that no bitterness root grows up in you that it may defile many people. So the first thing is bitterness begins with a seed that's planted because of a hurt, because of a pain. Someone's done something to you, and when that is done, there's a seed that's planted in our hearts. It's called the seed of of bitterness, the seed that starts to build up and starts to grow. It starts to take root in the soil of our hearts. And so many times we don't even know it's growing there. We don't even see what's growing there because we're so busy doing other things. See, this seed that is planted that begins to grow, the roots begin to absorb and begin to grow deep and they begin to store Bitter feelings and resentment and anger and rage. These roots begin to, to stall, soil out and spread out inside of our hearts. And we don't even realize it. Why? Because bitterness is a dangerous root. See, if it's said, and Scripture says this, love keeps no record of wrongs. Bitterness keeps record of every wrong. Love overlooks a multitude of sins. Bitterness takes track and keeps account of every single sin. Bitterness is something that we don't even realize. Well, someone did this to me, and I remember it vividly, and it hurt deep, and I don't want to disregard the pain of the seed that's planted. It's very real. Some of you here today... You've been hurt tremendously. You have been um, victimized. You have suffered. I don't want to disregard that it's there. I just want you to realize that bitterness starts to take, take its roots and it begins to weave in our hearts. And it begins to absorb all that pain, all that anger, all that suffering, all those things that you never want to deal with. Your root is growing deep and the root is very deadly. It steals our joy. It steals the peace. It steals uh, the tranquility that we have in our life. It steals the laughter we can share with others. This dangerous root goes deep and it hurts deeply. Bitterness is a dangerous root. The second thing that scripture teaches us is that bitterness is a poisonous fruit. It produces a poisonous fruit. Hatred is the fruit. Anger is the fruit. Rage is the fruit. Uh, relationships broken over and over and over again is the dangerous fruit. New Living Translation says it this way. It says, whenever the bitter root springs up, many, says many are corrupted by its poisonous fruit. Bitterness, is, it, it, it corrupts those around us. Think about it this way. Here's, here's what I'll say. You know when a bitter person is around. Think about your office place. Think about uh, your family. Think about uh, maybe, uh, maybe you have a group of friends that get together. And it just seems interesting that uh, you'll be having a great time. And then you've got those Debbie Downers that come into the room. And they're just like, yeah. And you're just kind of like, good Lord, wait a just. The party, who invited the party booby? I mean, just every, it's going good. Then all of a sudden, I hope you're not one of them. You know, here's how you know if you're one of them. Do they flee when you come around? It might be you. Don't look at somebody else. <laughs> Bitterness produces a very poisonous fruit. Five qualities of 
bitter people. Five qualities that I see in bitter people is this. Number one, bitter people tend to justify their bitterness. I've never met a bitter person who's been bitter, and I've talked to them about their bitterness, that they haven't justified it. And and rightly so. They're probably very justified in why they're bitter. You don't understand? It's different for me. I understand you might be close to the similar to the same thing, but it's different for me because this is what's happened to me. I have the right to be angry. I have the right to be the victim because I was victimized. Bitter people tend to justify their bitterness. The second thought of a bitter person, maybe you find yourself here. Bitter people, uh, they tend to become overly critical. A bitter person who has been hurt or harmed or, or have that root growing inside of them, they're critical people. They're critical about how people dress. They're critical about how they act. They're critical by uh, what they watch. They're critical by what they drive. They're just critical people. They just criticize everything. Girl's been hurt uh, by, girl, by another girl, and so she becomes overly critical about girls in general. And look at her, you know, and they give her the up and down. Oh, wow, look at what she does. She thinks she's all that. She's nasty. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> You know, then you got guys that, you know, he looks so macho, he looks so what? He's posting on Facebook, pumping iron, who cares? Man, I, I'm bigger than him, I could do it. And we become critical about everything. Here's how you know if you're a critical person. When you search through Facebook, do you compare yourself to them? And when you compare yourself, are you comparing yourself and you're going, look at that, they're so stupid. These are the things we do if we're dealing with the root of bitterness. Third thing is this, third thought I have is bitter people tend to secretly celebrate the misfortune of others. I think that was pretty self-explanatory. Got in a car wreck? You got in a car wreck? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. You lost your job? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. No, secretly celebrating inside like, ha, sucker. You deserve it. You're a jerk. Bitter people, fourth thing, bitter people tend to write off entire groups of people. Hurt by a doctor, all doctors are bad. Hurt by a man, all men are bad. Hurt by a woman, all women are bad. Hurt by a pastor, all pastors are bad. Hurt by a church, all church or churches are bad. Bitter people tend to carry that and they write off entire groups of people. Number five, uh, kind, of a, kind of what a bitter person might look like is a, a bitter people, they struggle to see bitterness in the mirror. They can never see it for themselves. Here's what they'll say. A lot of times bitter people who are truly bitter, they'll see bitterness in other people, but they won't see it in themselves. They can be critical of people, and they can criticize people, but don't you dare criticize me. Don't you dare criticize someone I love. So who are you bitter? To what are you a bitter? What has happened in your life that has caused possibly a seed to be planted that has taken a dangerous root and now is producing poisonous fruit? Got looked over by a promotion of that, that, the pers- that employee that you work side by side, you did the same amount of work, you did more work than they did, and you got overlooked from the promotion, and that's carried with you a sense of bitterness in your heart. Parents, you know, your parents seem to always favor that, that boy or that girl, that other sibling, and seem to always call favorites, and so you carried with you this sense of, my mom and dad don't care about me, they care more about them, or flip the script. You're, you think you're the one they care more about. You think you're the one that's more favored. And you look down on your siblings and go, they don't even know. They're idiots. I'm the loved one here. I'm the favored child, right? You know who you are. They took advantage of me. They stole money from me. You've gone through a, a divorce situation and it's, it's ended ugly. And they've said wrong, unjustful, unjustly things about you on the other side, and you carry with you this sense of bitterness and a sense of resentment to the opposite, to, the, to your ex. Someone stole something from you, either physically, like a, a piece of material things, a, a phone or a watch, or they stole your innocence. They stole the thing that you can never get back. Someone hurts you, or here's even better, someone hurts your kids. Root of bitterness begins to grow and produces a poisonous fruit. So 
my final moments here today, how do, we, how do we find healing? How do we find restoration? How do we find a way to cut off the root of bitterness? Now, I'm not a plumber. I, I, I act like I'm one, but I'm not really a plumber. Um, but I do know that if roots get inside your plumbing, they'll clog things up, right? You guys all know that the roots are a horrible thing for plumbing. And so, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can get out there to get it. I've heard put bleach down it, and you can, you can get this stuff that you put down in liquid fire or something like that. And, it, you know, it basically poisons our water. But, man, you don't have roots anymore in your system, so good for you. Thanks for doing that for us. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a way to get rid of the roots, but you've got to get rid of the roots in order for there to be a free flow of water source to, get to, to, to move through your plumbing. And, and so the first thing that I want to kind of lead into here is we have to figure out what is the thing that's going to get rid of the roots to free, free us up from the bitterness that's choking off life to our spirits. So I want to read it to you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32. I love that scripture tells us, gives us the antidote for all these things. He, he lets us know how to find healing. Here's what it says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32, it says, uh, to get rid of all bitterness, in order for us to get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice, what are we to do? What are we to do? Say it with me. What's the first word? Be kind. Be kind. Hmm. That's a good starting point. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Say it with me. Forgiving each other. Just as Christ God forgave you. So what is the antidote? Keep that up there for me, guys. What is the antidote? Well, the antidote is forgiveness. But in order to get forgiveness stirred up and going in our life, we have to learn to be kind. Be compassionate with people. Understand that during this season and every day of life, people are struggling with something. And I believe sometimes and many times at a greater place of struggle than where you're at. And you say, well, no, it's a competition. My pain's worse than theirs. <clears throat> Be kind, compassionate, forgiving one another. The antidote is we're going to be kind, we're going to be compassionate, and we're going to offer forgiveness even to people that don't even ask. That situation that hurt you when you were younger, that person that took advantage of you in some way, shape, or form, you're going to give forgiveness without them even asking. Well, why would I do that, Kevin? Pastor, why would I give them forgiveness when they haven't asked for it? Well, because bitterness is a dangerous root and produces a dangerous, a poisonous fruit. And if you don't deal with forgiveness, you'll never find freedom from the poison that's so raging through your veins. You give it not because they deserve it. You give it because you want to be free from how they've held you captive. Statistically, sad statistic. Statistic that right now here today are going to touch many lives in this room. Statistically, one in four, one in four women are sexually abused. That sexual abuse is either through physical, it could be through physical touch, it could be through verbal, it could be through uh, 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 things that, that were spoken to them in an inappropriate way, but one in four are some way affected and touched by this horrible, horrible thing. I mean, I can go through here and I could take all the girls and women and I could go one, two, three, you, one, two, three, you, one, two, three, you. Get my drift, just look around the room, see, count off every fourth statistically would be touched or affected in some way by this sexual impropriety, this, this sexual uh, predator that is out there. It's a horrible, horrible thing. And many of you sit here today and you've walked through that in your own personal life. 
It's painful. It's devastating. It cuts deep. And if not dealt with, whoever or whatever was done to you, they will continue to do it to you the rest of your life. This is the problem. We oftentimes think, if I hold it against them, if I never let it go, if I constantly am reminded about it, they owe me. They owe me forgiveness. They owe me repentance. They owe me. What we don't understand is whenever we think with the the mentality that they owe me, they do own us. They don't owe us. They own us. They own everything in us. They own all of our emotions. Some of you today, this is going to be a revelation. Just hear me today. Some of you is going to be a revelation. The greatest thing you can do today is you release them from owing you anything so that you can own your soul. Amen. That was a Holy Ghost moment right there. You need to take back what God has given you and own your soul back. Don't let them own it. They don't get power over it. You release them. You forgive them. You say, God, I don't know how, but I need to release them from this bitterness, this anger, this resentment, this malice in my heart. You just poisonous fruit. There it is. I can't stand looking at them. I can't stand hearing their voices. Some of you got to live with them every holiday. In order, to keep, in order to keep peace, you think, in order to keep peace is, well, I just won't say anything. I'm not telling you to say anything. What I'm telling you is you first need to take it to God and get forgiveness from God. And you give forgiveness to those around you. You say, it was wrong. Yes. Not saying it's right. What I'm saying is if you hear the heartbeat of God, the reason why he says be kind, compassionate, forgiving those before they ever ask is because he wants you to know you can be free in Jesus' name. You can find freedom in Jesus' name. You can either be the victim or the victor. And it all comes down to this step of forgiveness. Now, some of you today, I'll say this, some of you will get a supernatural deliverance some of you, God, will do a supernatural healing inside your life, and he'll, he'll immediately start to work on these things. He'll immediately start to heal these areas that are very hurtful and very painful and very deep. He'll do an immediate work inside of you. But I will tell you, for the most part, it's a long process. It's an everyday walkout process. It's a long haul. The process is painful. The process takes us to counselors. The process takes us to pastors. The process takes us to prayer upon prayer upon prayer, praying for the one, the many who hurt you, releasing them to God every day and saying, God, help me. Help me to release them. I forgive them. Help me to forgive them. Help me to forgive them. And you may not feel like it. It may not feel like a right then, but over time, as you cover it in prayer, God's going to begin to set you free. God's going to begin to free you. I wish I had magic words that could just, I could speak them, and Dan knows what I'm talking about. And when you're talking to people, and you're counseling people, and you want to just say the words, and it's just like, boom, there it is, done. Oh, God, I wish I had those words. I don't have the words. But I know the one who does, and I know the one who heals, and I know the one who forgives, and I know the one who can do a, ma- a, a miracle work inside of me. What we need is we need God, to His Holy Spirit, to come and to fill us and to, to take out this root of bitterness, to, to give freedom and to give, to give uh, forgiveness so that we can find freedom. That's what's important. Why is it important? Matthew 6, 14, 15. It says, for if you forgive men, if you forgive men and other people their sin against you, your heavenly Father can then forgive you. But if you do not forgive, if you do not offer forgiveness to those that have hurt you, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Why is it so important? 
to forgive because we forgive because he's forgiven us. I don't wanna go into details, but I know that in my personal life, I have had to learn how to walk through the root of bitterness to the poisonous fruit that is revealed in my life. And I've had to, God has had to teach me how to release forgiveness to the ones that I was victimized by. And only as I walked through that, did God really let me have true joy. Will there still be others down the road? Yeah, I'll still have to walk through things. I'll still have to deal with things, but I know now the power of forgiveness. And some of you today, that's what God wants to do. He wants to teach you the power of forgiveness. Will you bow your heads with me today? Father, help us today to to recognize this poisonous, this poisonous fruit that creeps up inside of us. It's so dangerous to our souls. They choke the life out of us. Just when we think we're over, God, something happens and it creeps back up and all of a sudden there we see bitterness lying in wait all over again. The dangerous root that produces poisonous fruit. The fruit of anger and hatred and malice. Broken, poisonous relationships. Search us right now, Holy Spirit. Head bowed and eyes closed. Can you just say that? Search me, God. Search me, Holy Spirit. Where are the areas that I have been hurt? That possibly lived in denial that anything's wrong. But deep down, I must forgive. I want them to owe me something. But God, if I look for them owing me something, I I need to realize they own me. And I don't want to be owned by them. I want to be owned by you, God. So help me to forgive, release, and move on and find my full identity in Christ. Forgiveness in you as well. With head bowed and eyes closed, this is a painful message, a message that during this holiday season, many of you are going to have to confront face to face. You're going to have to deal with face to face and deal, confront even those that have victimized you and done things to you. And, and you have this root of bitterness inside of you and pain that's so right. I mean, it's justified from the standpoint of the pain that has come, but it does not justify the poisonous fruit that it's bearing in your life. Today, you want to be free. Today, you want to find freedom today. You want to, you want to release so they no longer own you. They no longer continue to, to, to have control over you, but you find freedom in Christ today. If that's you here today, I want you just right there where you're at. Not going to have you raise your hand. Not going to have you stand. Not going to have you down. Just right there where you're at. You know who you are with your head bowed and eyes closed right now where you're at. Would you just say this? Would you say, God, I don't know how, but I need you to help me release Release the person who victimized me in some way. Hurt my kids. Release how they have hurt my family or they have hurt my future in some way. I ask you, God, say this. I ask you, help me as you have forgiven me. Help me to learn how to forgive and release them. Not just right now but every day, every hour, when the the feelings of anger and resentment come up in my heart, help me to release and forgive and pray for them and pray for that situation. Just ask you, God, to heal my heart. Wherever that root is, pour that cleaner down inside there, the Holy Spirit, and clean out so that free life is flowing to me. Thank you, God. Thank you for releasing us from bitterness. Every day, may we walk with you. Speak of your goodness. Forgive those so that, God, we may find forgiveness for ourselves. Thank you, God. Your mercy is amazing. Your 
grace so good. We just sing that. and transpired and God even when we didn't deserve forgiveness you sent your son you gave him you born him of humble beginnings so that his life could redeem us all may you continue to remind us that this holiday season let us travel light with one handful living instead of two and today God with releasing bitter bitterness to you in Jesus name and all God's people said amen amen you may be seated this morning Ushers are going to come. We're going to worship with our giving today. 